Yeah, good morning. Let me continue the next problem. So it is a problem of frame, but at the same time, you can observe there is a support at E and as well as C. It is a lateral supports are there. So the problem is considered under non-sway only. So it doesn't come under sway. So it is unsymmetrical loading, unsymmetrical frame, but you have a lateral support. So it is considered as non-sway problem. So as usual, there will be no change in the procedure compared to your continuous beams. I will write general slope deflection equation MAB is MFAB plus 2EI by L 2 times of theta A plus theta B minus 3 delta by L and of course this term will not come in this case. Let me take this as equation. So I am repeating this equation for every problem so that you will remember that equation. So based on this equation only entire method is depend. So first step as usual, fixed end moments. Let me consider AB as a fixed beam and to calculate the fixed end moments since it is subjected to UDL, MFAB is equal to minus MFBA that we know the equation it is WL square by 12 that means it is minus 30 into L is 4 square divided by 12 so it is minus of 40 kilo Newton meter. So coming to the next span MFBC you can observe the load is symmetrical but the magnitudes are different. So we need to calculate separately both of them. MFBC is minus, I will put the equation WAB square by L square for the first one minus W2 corresponding AB square by L square. So it is equal to now minus 30 for 30 A is 2 whereas B is 4 square divided by total is 6 square is 36 minus for W2 20 the corresponding A is 4 whereas B is 2 square divided by L square is 36. If you do this calculation it comes out to be 35.556 minus 35.556 kilo Newton meter. On the same lines you can find MFCB it is W a square B by L square W1 plus W2 A square B divided by L square. So corresponding to W1 it is 30 into A square is 2 square into 4 by 6 square is 36 plus 20 A square is 4 square into 2 divided by 36. The answer is plus 31.11 and I have another vertical member here BD subjected to symmetrical load it is 60 kilo Newton so MF BD will be equal to minus MF DB because it is symmetrical minus of the equation is WL by 8 that is equal to minus 16 to 4 divided by 8 that is minus 30 kilo Newton meter. So these are the quantities of the fixed end moments. So let me move on to the next step. Second step is slope deflection equations. MAB MFAB is minus 40 plus 2 into, you have to observe the value of the EI given. If it is not given, you can take it as 1. Since it is given now, it is 2I, 2 times of EI divided by span is 4 multiplied by 2 times of theta A plus theta B. I can just simplify this now. 40 plus 2 EI theta A plus EI theta B take this as equation 2. To write the second equation for the same span MBA just use the same principle now 
MBA, if there is a change in fixed end moment, you have to put it, it is plus 40 now. You just exchange the coefficients of theta A and theta B. EI theta A plus 2 EI theta B. That will be your third equation. Coming to next span, MBC minus 35.556 plus 2 into if EI value is given as 1.5 I, so it is 1.5 EI divided by span is 6 in the bracket it is 2 times of theta B plus theta C. I can put this simplify now and open the brackets. 2 into 1.5, 3 by 6 is 0.5. If you multiply that with the inside 1, 2 times theta b, it is ei theta b plus 0.5 ei theta c. Take this as equation 4. So, other end of the same member, mcb, I can use it 31.11 plus exchange the coefficients. 0.5 EI theta B plus EI theta C, number 5. The last one is the member BD, the vertical member. Since we start from B, let it be taken as left hand support. MBD is again minus 30 plus 2 times EI is not given or it is only 1 EI divided by 4 multiplied by theta B plus 2 times of theta b plus theta d. So, if you simplify this now, it is minus 30 plus ei theta b plus 0.5 ei theta d. Take this as 6. And the last equation, I can use the same thing now, m d b is equal to plus 30 plus 0.5 EI theta B plus EI theta D. So, using the coefficients exchange, you can simply develop the other end of the final moment equation. So, let me go to the next step now. Since we have developed without using conditions now, let me use the end conditions or the boundary conditions along with the joint equilibrium condition. Third step, let me take A in that one, end conditions. I have three supports here, A, D and as well as C. I can use the conditions at these supports. Let me take at A, you look at the condition. Since it is fixed, what will be the available condition? Slope is equal to 0. So, straight away take out these terms in these equations. In equation 2, I do not need this term and as well as in equation 3, E i theta a is eliminated. So, out of the 3 unknowns, 2 already, sorry, theta a is eliminated and at d, again the support is fixed. So, theta d is again equal to 0. So, you can eliminate theta d from the last 2, 6 and 7. So, eliminate theta d. And at C, it is hinged end. What is the condition in the end? The final moment at that point should be equal to 0 because it is on a simple end. So, where is the equation for MCB now? Use this equation 5. So, from equation 5, 0 is equal to plus 31.11 plus 0.5 E i theta b plus E i theta c. Therefore, I can rearrange this 0.5 E i theta b plus E i theta c is equal to minus 31.11. Take this equation as 8. So, out of the 4 unknowns theta a, theta b, theta c and d, you could eliminate theta a and d because the ends are fixed 
and using the condition at C because it is a hinged end or simple end, we can get one equation. We need to get one more equation that you can get it from the joint where B use the joint equilibrium or we can also call that as compatibility condition. So 3B it is compatibility condition it is nothing but your joint equation at B since there are three members are meeting MBA plus MBC plus MBD should be equal to 0. Since it is a rigid joint, the moments from all the three portions may be different, but if you add them together, it should be equal to 0. So, MBA equation number 3, MBC is equation number 4, and MBD is equation number 6. So, therefore, adding equation 3, equation 4, plus equation 6. You can take the terms together now. I have from 3 EI 2 times of theta b and from equation 4 it is EI theta b and from equation 6 it is EI theta b. Totally it becomes 4 times of EI theta b plus. Let me take theta c now. I do not have theta c from 3 whereas EI theta c from equation 0.5 EI theta c from equation 4 only 1. So, it is 0.5 EI theta C and add the numerical values 40 plus 35.556 minus 30 comes to minus 25.556 transfer that to the other side it is plus 25.556 take this as equation 8. Now we got two equations with two unknowns, two linear simultaneous equations. So on solving these two, we will get the expressions for the slopes. Solving 8 and 9, we get. So simple equations, you can solve it now. So the answer is EI theta b is equal to 10.963. and EI theta C is of course the other two are already 0 theta A and theta D that we already introduced into the slope deflection equations. So once you got this substitute back into the equations 2 to 7 you will get all the end moments. So, final moments. Substitute into these equations now. To get this substitute theta b and theta c in equations 2 to 7. So, substituting now MAB, I will put it clearly minus 40 plus EA theta B is 10.963, it is equal to 29.037 minus 29.037 kilo Newton meter. MBA plus 40 plus 2 times of theta b 2 into 10.963 that will be equal to again positive value both of them it is 61.926 mbc from equation 4 minus 35 point 556 plus EI theta B is 10.963 plus 0.5 we have minus term here so plus 0.5 into minus 36.592 the answer for this is 42.889.
minus 42.88 and you have MCB MCB is plus 31.11 plus 0.5 into 10.963 plus 0.5 into minus 36.9 592 you may get some fraction value but it should be equal to 0 it is 0 0.0005 next mbd is minus 30 plus 10.963 is equal to 19.037 minus 19.037 And the last one MDB plus 30 plus 0.5 into 10.963. So totally it will be 35.482. So these are the final moments to have a check on your calculations. What are the condition we used at joint B MBA? plus MBC plus MBD should be equal to 0. I have MBA is 61.926 minus 42.889 minus 19.037. It should be 0 or maybe with small minor fraction values may come. You can take it as 0. So your calculations are correct. Let me move on to what is required now. We use the subdeflection till now to find out the end conditions that is rotations and deflections whatever it is and then we are substituted back to get the end moments. So once it is done now they have asked you to sketch the bending moment diagram and elastic curve. So we need to find these quantities or to draw these diagrams also I need to take free body diagram of these members. Let me take the member AB now. Free body diagram of AB. It is a 4 meter span subjected to UDL of 30 kilo Newton per meter. <coughs> Let me put only vertical reaction perpendicular to the member so that you can sketch the shear force diagram. I have a end moment at A, M, A, B is 29.037 minus, so it is anti clockwise. M, B, A is 61.926 clockwise kilo Newton meter. So, this is what the free body diagram. I can put this as R, A, and here. I don't get the full vertical reaction, but the other member is also meeting there. So partial reaction R B. Use the same principles of your basic equilibrium equations. Sigma of M A equal to 0. Treat positive for clockwise moments. If we take moment about A now, 30 into 4 into 4 by 2 due to UDL plus 61.926 the moment at B minus 29.037 and minus RBA into 4 is equal to 0. If we do this calculation, the reaction comes out to be RBA is 68.22. Positive value you will get that means the assumed direction is perfectly right. So use the other equation of equilibrium, sigma of Fy equal to 0, treat positive for upward forces, I have two upward reactions Ra plus Rba minus the total load on the span is 13 to 4, 120 is equal to 0. Therefore I can calculate the value of Ra, Ra is 120 minus 68 point. 2 2 
so it is 51.78 kilonewton again this one is also acting upwards if we just mark these values onto this beam 51.78 kilonewton and this is 68.22 kilonewton use them to sketch the shear force diagram of that segment 51 since it is UDL linear variation 68.22 so transfer back this point where it is changing its sign from positive to negative let me take with some name let us take it as P what are the importance of this one where the shear force is changing its sign we will get the maximum bending moment the possible one so to find out that I need to find this distance x how to find this distance x we know that the shear force here changes its sign means it becomes 0 instantaneously so f of p let me take it to the left because I am measuring the distance from the left side that is 51.78 acting upwards minus 13 to x is equal to 0 algebraic sum of vertical forces to the left of the section therefore your x will be equal to 1.726 meters so at a distance of 1.726 meters you will get this point so at that point let me calculate the bending moment mp take this to the left side again take the algebraic sum of the moments using basic sign convention of the bending moment 51.78 into 1.726 and I have minus 29.037 acting moment there minus 13 to 1.726 into 1.726 divided by 2 it is 1.726 square divided by 2 15.65 of course it is positive so we got the medi moment maximum in the span that is at a distance of 1.726 and we can use them to sketch the bending moment diagram later let me find out for the other two spans also on the same lines free body diagram of BC BC is again a horizontal member with two concentrated loads of magnitude 30 kilonewton and 20 kilonewton let me put the reaction here as RBC the partial one again here it is complete MCB is 0 whereas MBC is 42.889 same principle take moment about B and equate it to 0 positive for clockwise it is 30 into 2 plus 20 into 4 minus 42.889 minus RC into 6 equal to 0 you can do the calculation the RC value is equal to 16.185 course acting upwards use the other equation sigma of f y equal to 0 r b c plus r c minus of 30 minus 20 equal to r b c is total is 50 minus 16.185 it is 33.815 
transfer them on to the beam 33.185 kilonewton sorry 815 18815 at C 16.185 16.185 16 33.18815 here constant comes down by 30 remaining is 3.815 Again, constant here up to this point, 20 kilonewton. It comes down here. The remaining is 16.185. They have a reaction of 16.185. Plus and minus. So we have a distinct point where it is changing its sign. It is better to have the moments at both the points. Let me take this as Q and as well as R. Both the points are clearly known, you don't need to locate them, it is already located 2 meters from either side. Let me have the bending moment at Q that is equal to MQ, take left hand side 33.815 into 2 minus 42.889. That is equal to. 24.741 and again the bending moment at R, MR, I will take it to the right side, I have only one value it is 16.185 into 2 because the moment is 0 there, so it is equal to 32.37 kilo newton meter. We got the values for this member BC also now, the reaction and as well as the moments at salient points. Let me move on to the, the next member. It is free body diagram of member BD. I have 60 kilonewton acting from right to left, so automatically your reactions will be from left to right. Let me put this as RBH and RDH because it is horizontal reactions. And the moments are 19.037 is minus, so anti-clockwise. and 35.482 it is clockwise. Let me leave this space to sketch SFD. Take as usual bending moment about any of the point MB equal to 0. I have 60 into 2 120 positive plus 35.482 minus 19.037 minus RDH into 4 equal to 0. So therefore RDH is 34.111. Use the other equation. In this case we can call that as sigma fx net horizontal force on this free body diagram should be equal to 0. I have RBH plus RDH minus 60 equal to 0. Therefore, RBH is equal to 60 minus 34.111. It is 25.889. Mark the values on the beam, RBH is 25.889 kilonewton, whereas RDH is 34.111 kilonewton. 
acting towards right and no load up to this point you can call this as point as s sudden drop of 60 kilo newton again constant the value is 25.889 and this one is 34.111 so you have a clear point where it is changing its sign that is the point where load is applied we consider that point as s let me have the bending moment at s ms take to the right or left that means upwards or downwards ms is 25.889 into 2 minus 19.037 so it will be around 32.741 so we got all the values from the free body diagrams use them to sketch the bending moment diagram use the bending moment diagram to sketch the elastic of course shear force diagram we already done it if they asked you just combine them together and get the final shear force for the entire frame so bending moment diagram let me take a b transfer these moments onto the frame so that it will be clear you have 29.037 kilo newton meter 61.926 clockwise anti clockwise 42.889 and anti clockwise 19.037 and clockwise 34.111 and of course at C it is equal to 0. To sketch this now mark the values along the direction of the arrow it is 29.037 29.937 I have a positive value at a distance of 1.706, 15.644. All of them are kilonewtons. Since it is subjected to UDL, the variation is parabolic. Let me take it separately, the span BC. The moment on this side is 42.889 and here it is 0. I have two distinct values 24.74 at this point under 30 kN load and under 20 kN load it is 32.37. And since it is point loads the variation will be linear and let me take the vertical member we have a moment of 19.037 at d sorry b and i have 34. Point 111 exactly at midpoint I have a positive value of 32.741 again the loads are point load connect them by linear lines plus minus so this three individual constituents the total bending moment diagram of the given prop or you can combine them for the top and then put it separately now to sketch the elastic curve use these points where the shear force is changing sorry bending moment is changing its sign here two points in ab one in bc and two in again in 
bd use them to sketch the deformed shape of the frame that is called as your elastic curve you can't take the measurement exactly that is another calculation so we'll take it approximately so it will have clear distinction of hogging and sagging bending moment you can observe here from the support till this point it is hogging only near this joint b it is sagging and coming to this since the load is acting from right to left the sagging comes to the left side and then hogging correspondingly this will be your if you just measure this rotation your theta b will remain same for all the members meeting at that particular joint so this completes the problem of the frame with various type of loads since it's why you are concerned this problem particularly frames also generally it doesn't go sway if you have a symmetrical load and symmetrical problem then it is a non sway if we have any support in the horizontal direction whatever may be the load and frame it will be always non sway the sway problem will take next thank you